Yes, I, so I thank you gentlemen very much for giving this presentation. And my question has to do with the long war that this country has been in since 9-11. And it's specifically a question for General Neller. How do you under, we've been fighting this war now 17 years, long time. How do you understand the enemy that we're fighting, we call it radical Islam or the global jihad? Do you see, people tend to think of it as one Islamic or a few Islamic characters and their crazy followers. But do you see intelligence agencies involved in that? And specifically, are intelligence agencies involved in radical Islam, using and covertly supporting these people? And specifically in regards to ISIS, there was a, a very interesting article in the German magazine Der Spiegel about three years ago, which argued that, which, which said that the core of ISIS is the former Iraqi regime with this Islamic overlay. Is that something you would agree with or you have a different perspective? I left Iraq in 2007 and Clearly, the, the ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Iraq that we fought there did include former Saddam personnel. I can't tell you what, they, what it is now. And, and I, I don't think it, it's not this. I mean, I, I think you got to look by country by country. What's going on in the Philippines? What's going on in Afghanistan? What's going on in Iraq? What's going on in Yemen? What's going on in Somalia? What's going on in Nigeria, Libya, Chad, Niger, Syria? Europe, it's not this, there's not a single, you know, thing other than them, whoever these people are, whether they're criminals, whether they are believers, that they use Islam as, you know, Islam's being violated, that's my personal opinion. And that therefore you should come and help us because you're, you know, you're not being given the opportunity to worship or whatever, or your land's being occupied. So, at the end of the day, you know, that's, that's very interesting. And all I know is, based on the information that we see, there's people out there that want to come to this country and hurt us. Do you think if the United States did more in terms of its information operations and the way it presents this, the, this threat, say, it, regarding ISIS, to emphasize that there are former Iraqi regime officials involved, and if you say you live in France and you go join ISIS, you are in fact cannon fodder for these former Iraqi regime elements. That that would be a good approach. I to think that people are already. I think I'm not going. I don't know what the French information policy is, or the German information, or the Italian, or the Spanish, or the Belgian, who all have significant uh, populations that came from this part of the world. But I believe they all use that as a say. Hey, look, you, these people are not telling you the truth. You're not going to go there. And many people that have come back have publicly stated that. And they're on the news and they're saying, hey, you, this is not a true story. You're not there. This, this, they're using Islam to, to deceive you and take advantage of you. So I believe that's happening. But we also have to have, if you're going to be on, inform, on the information highway, you have to have something that somebody's going to read. We've all, we as Americans, we've tried very, very hard to message the populations to tell them you know, what we believe is to their advantage, that, is, that we're not there. We don't want their land. We're not going to stay. We're not there to take anything. We're here to give you an opportunity to live in peace. But they have to be able to believe that, and there's always a counter-narrative. So the information fight goes on every day, and we're continuing to try to be as effective as we can in that in space. Uh, we're probably going to have a hard time being as effective as we would like, but we're still fighting that fight. I mean, at the end of the day, back to the long war discussion, there's going to have to be a political settlement. And all the efforts to reconcile with the Taliban through the Afghan government, I, f I think we all fully support, because at the end of the day, you know, they're fighting us, they have their agenda, we're there to support the Afghan government, and they're going to have to be convinced or decide on their own that there's a better way to do this. I mean, they've been fighting, what, 40 years? And so we're hopeful that, you know, we can support the Afghan military and the governor and, and Hellman and the local police and the national police and that we can create a secure environment so that the Afghans can have an election 
and that possibly there'll be enough, there'll be a, a significant enough program so that those Taliban uh, who think there might be a better way to live their lives and continue to have their young men get killed, uh, being led by people that aren't even there in the fight, they live in other countries, and that are convincing them that this is the right thing to do when really all they're doing is making money on drugs. I mean, we talk about, you know, the, the, uh, the terrorists call themselves, you know, they're the freedom fighters, they're the mujahideen. They're not. They're criminals. I think the uh, Arabic word is takfiri. They're apostates. They hide behind Islam. They sell drugs. They kill innocent people. That's not what Islam is. The Afghan army and, and the American, we're the, we're the mujahideen. We're the mujahideen. That's the message. And maybe they'll get tired of this and they'll decide that there's a better way and then we can move on to something else.